1997, the majority of people think that drunks who misuse A&E services should be fined, according to an exclusive Daybreak survey. We carried out a research after a health think tank revealed how binge drinking and alcohol abuse is affecting the emergency services. Well, around 30% of people who use A&E during the week are drunk. This rises to nearly 70% at weekends. In our Daybreak survey, 14% of people said they have been so drunk they've needed medical help in hospital or in an ambulance. 68% believe that people who are drunk should be fined if they require medical attention in a hospital or ambulance. And almost half think the fine should be up to £50. Pounds. Well, we're joined now by uh, Katie Fawcett, live from Wolverhampton New Cross Hospital. Morning to you, Katie. You've been uh, filming a, a busy A&E department there overnight. Um, how bad did it get? Alid, it got pretty bad. We arrived around 9 o'clock last night, left around 1 in the morning. There were still some of the same people sat in the waiting room. Meanwhile, nurses desperately tried to run around after an increasing number of drunk people who were coming in, many of them making a lot of mess and getting quite aggressive. They called out security on three occasions, but because they're so overstretched, they only came on the third. And in the end, they had to call the police who came out to deal with one gentleman. And it just shows that the, the effect that drinking is having on an already overstretched to NHS. Do you know where you are? Another drunk patient. On a bad night, they can make up almost three quarters of all admissions to accident and emergency. One cubicle after another, just full of patients on the trolleys, sleeping it off. How, how much have you had to drink? About eight pints. Meanwhile, in the waiting room, the queue is growing. Intoxicated, smells, and just drooling all over everyone it is not nice. There's more people in need that have got more of a problem than obviously they have. I confiscated that in room too. OK, thank mm. you. How often does that happen? Um, quite a lot. We sometimes have quite a distillery in our treatment room of whiskey bottles. In fact, this is quite a small bottle. For the nurses, it makes a difficult job even harder. When they're obstructing you from doing your other job, it's quite frustrating, especially if they collapse outside when they've got no cigarette. So my next job is just to clean the urine up so it's ready for the next patient. Now, this A&E department says it gets 40,000 more admissions every year than it can actually handle, and you could really sense the nurses' frustrations that so many of them were self-inflicted. Thank you. Thank you. So we're joined yeah. now by Julia Manning from the Think Tank 2020 and Health and former NHS uh, Chief Roy Lilly. Good to see both of you. And, uh, Julia, a &E, we saw there, you know, nurses having to clean up all kinds of things. and yeah. They shouldn't have to be doing that. It's, it's, it's absolutely out outrageous, really. We, we need to do something. Do you think that fining people is, is a way forward? We do think that. So we did a, a survey, a small survey, about three or four years ago. Right. And that suggestion came from the public, not ah, from us. Right. And, and I, I think it, no, it's doable. We already have fines in the health service. We're used to paying speeding fines. In fact, this country raises nearly 90 million a year from feeding... From, uh, speeding fines. Right. So, so you're it, saying that money could be used and put back into the NHS? Absolutely. absolutely. And this is you know, on the back of the reports we had yesterday about A&E being in crisis mm. and just not being able to cope with the number of people coming in. And a significant proportion, as your report showed, are drunk and they're just abusing the system. So they should be sent an invoice afterwards. Uh, how do you implement it? Do you, do you breathalyse everyone that comes to A&E then? I think the staff are pretty savvy and they know. I mean, you could, you know, breathalyse if you're not sure and if someone, you know, keeps it's coming be back. It's almost impossible to implement, isn't it? No, I don't think so. No, I mean, we're, we're used to uh, being sent, you know, parking fines for the through the post and uh, the uh, ambulance services have got used to sending people fines when they're called out, you know, for a pussycat up the tree or someone being locked out. So it's perfectly doable. What do you reckon? Well, <laughs> I look at policy on the basis of what are we trying to achieve and will it work? If we're trying to stop people getting drunk and going into a and &E, finding them will make no difference. They'll turn up, get drunk, still make a mess in a and &E, and we'll find them. That doesn't help. Will it work? Well, I think you've got the issue of collection. You're not going to get nurses running around with a credit card machine because they're too busy. If they haven't got the wherewithal to pay a cash fine there and then, you've got to send them an invoice, as Julia says. And if That's more red tape, isn't it? More if you, well, if you don't pay... You know, and so the public is suggesting a £50 fine, OK? Mm. It's going to cost £50 to administrate it. If they don't pay it, we've got a small claims court, attachment of earnings, and the kind of people who are likely to get drunk and end up in a and &E are not the kind of people, I think, perhaps, who are going to pay a fine. And lastly, this is going to require 
primary legislation because the NHS is not allowed to charge for any of its services and and I can't see a politician is going to get anywhere near this because I think it's a slippery slope and people are going to say well we're going to find the drunks today and you know look a and is full of old people let's find people for being old you know so well, that's different it, come on I mean but, being old is different from actually well, get, being drunk but, like, but, yeah, really. but you know so you could say okay uh, you've injured yourself playing squash uh, nobody makes you play squash uh, um, you can afford to play squash you can afford a fine for putting your knee out I mean there's, there's a whole kind of raft of stuff that sits under this mm. and the real issue for me is if you find a drunk 50 quid will it stop them getting drunk will they say oh I won't uh, there's a guy you know had eight pints or whatever it was you know mm. or oh, I won't have the six pint because I'm going to be fined 50 pounds if I end up in A&E yeah, no but our findings are pretty shocking the fact that everyone 70 percent of people are drunk in A&E well, at the weekend so what's I, the solution I, I, do I, I don't, that's the difference you know with yeah. we're talking the pr numbers we're talking at least about 21 million people go to A&E each year and at least seven million of those are there because they're drunk I mean you're going to get a you know, 100 squash players. So we're talking about numbers, huge amounts of numbers. Mm. And I think fines do put people off. You know, the mes message is spread. And I think your listeners, as your poll showed, uh, think it's reasonable. We've got systems for, you know, uh, producing fines in other areas, so you know, speeding and from the fire service. Well, it doesn't so stop it's speeding, not beyond the wit of man. Mm. But I speeding, think, I think... speeding fines don't stop speeding. Drunk fines don't stop people being drunk. The issue is to go upstream and find out why the kids get drunk in the first place and stop it there. It's not a job okay. for any in a cash register. No, it's, uh, but I just feel really sorry for the, the nurses and the Absolutely. medical staff that yeah. have to deal with all I don't that. Think they so we all do. That. That way. And, and it, we need to do something about it. Thank you yeah. very much indeed. Yeah. Sorry to have to leave it there, but thank you. Okay.